Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Sing your love. Your love is lighting up the darkness. Fear is scattered and my worry quits. Your strength is rising in my weakness. How could I deserve a love like this? Nothing comes close My soul is safe within my Savior There's no other love that's greater My heart has become your throne Almighty, nothing comes close My soul is safe within my Savior There's no other love that's greater
Our Sunday at 10 worship service. I'm so glad that you are here with us. We are now in the month of August already. Allow me to read Psalms 8 that says, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, and out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise. How many of you want to worship the Lord this morning? You know, Psalms 8 is about creation. And I believe that you have a strength more than infants. Let's put our hands together. Let's give it up to Jesus. Victory. All I see is the mountain. You see. 
you know, I like to continue reading Psalms 8. You know, now it says in verse 3, okay, the psalmist wrote this, David. Okay, it says, When I consider your heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? You know, when I, I was reading this, you know, as we worship the Lord with this song, you know, when I, I look at how Psalmist David wrote, when I consider the heavens, you know, when God considers the heavens, He's thinking about you. And He thinks about the moon, He's thinking about you. And He's creating the stars, okay? He's thinking about you. And that's where, you know, God has Jesus sent, okay, to the earth for you and I. You know, last Sunday as we started the new series called More Than a Psalm, More Than a Song, Okay, I encourage everyone to read three psalms, okay? But actually, it's five psalms, okay? Five times 30 days, then there will be 150 psalms. You know, today is August 8th. So you can go like this, August 8th, you read 8. Then the next section is 30, so 38. The next one is 60, 68. Then the next section is 90, 98. So you go in that uh, sequence, I believe in this month of August, you will finish reading, okay, the book of psalms, amen? Alright, now practically I got two announcements to make. Okay, the first announcement is regarding our um, Kensing. Okay, our Kensing get together every second Sunday. Okay, our Kensing will come together for a time of uh, uh, worship, a time of uh, get together. If you are Mandarin speaking, alright, I want to encourage all of you and you have friends as well. Okay, link up with Cool Kaitrin GVG. Alright, so uh, get get to them and then you were able to be part of the uh, consing all right number second second announcement is about uh, the NECF 40 days of fasting and praying okay this year all right chosen the team called be still and also taken from psalms that is psalms 46 verse 10 that says be still and know i am the lord so we have lined up all our thursday beginning from uh, last thursday all right until september 16 all right every thursday we are coming together on zoom okay and let's pray together all right so take note about that all right okay that's about announcement next um we want to welcome all of you okay if your first time here okay uh, uh worshiping with us okay online okay your first time you click one or you can look at this the, the uh, uh, uh qr code that you can uh, uh connect with us because we want to connect with you as well for the rest of you you just type high five hello to everyone okay that's uh, online today all right now with that i want to call upon Catherine. Catherine is one of our life group leader okay we are leading bukit jumbo together with her husband bun hong okay Catherine, yours thank you pastor okay let's read together x20 and 35 in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. After I submitted this verse to share, our Heavenly Father challenged me. My husband, he received a call from his friend that they are in very bad, bad shape and their daughter was quarantined in Bangkok without food. I told my husband, let us bless them because we are so, so blessed to have food on our table and praise the Lord that we don't have to fly white flag in spite of in difficult time now. Brothers and sisters, as we trust and obey his words to give generously in, instead of expecting to receive during this hard time we are honoring our father and we will be blessed in every area of our lives because he is our jehovah jireh our provider am i right yes let's give cheerfully to our church and let's pray dear heavenly father may you bless our cheerful giver here for the extension of your kingdom and thank you lord for granting us the spirit of joy to give generously and not reluctantly we pray and we ask all this in jesus name and everyone say amen thank you 
you. Good morning to you and welcome to Every Nation Church Penang. We are in this new series called More Than a Song. And uh, we are going to uh, study the life of David, who is a man after God's own heart. And David surely and truly was a worshipper of God. He wrote many psalms in the Bible where songs that we sing in the church are birthed forth. The worship team earlier on sang this song, The Heart of Worship. I still remember... You know, the lyrics that say, I will bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. What is worship? Worship is about bringing your heart back to God, our Creator. Now, this series consists of four parts. Last week, Pastor started the series by sharing David's life in times of battle on his fight with Goliath. And the shepherd boy faced a mighty giant. Do you have a giant problem today? Now, if you have missed that part, please wield it online to get those answers. Now, today, I will share one part of David's life where he was in his times of weakness and how he worshipped God during those times. Let's look at this text from 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 9 to 14, which describes the actual situation of uh, David was in. This will be our background setting. Verse 9, David knew that Saul was plotting harm against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, bring the effort here. Then David said, O Lord, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come to Kela to destroy the city on my account. Will the man of Kela surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord, the God of Israel, please tell your servant. And the Lord replied him, He will come down. Then David asked, Will the man of Kela surrender me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. Then David and his men, who were about 600, arose and departed from Kela, and they went wherever they could go. When Saul was told, that David had escaped from Kela, he gave up the expedition. And David remained in the strongholds in the wilderness, in the hill country of the wilderness of Zip. And Saul sought him every day, but God did not give him into his hand. Let's pray. Abba Father, we thank you for the ministry of your word today. Lord, your word is alive, your word is active. Make our heart like a good soil, O God, so that you may bear fruit. Bear fruit when our hearts listen to your word, O God, Lord. And Lord, let it be so uh, fruitful, O God, when we hear your word and do your word, O God. In Jesus' name, I do ask and I pray. Amen. Like it or not, hardship is part of life. Becoming a Christian doesn't change that fact. In fact, Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Tough times have a way to reveal our true nature of how and what we are made up of. If two people were to face the same challenge and same problem, one may grow closer to God and bear fruit, while the other becomes anxious and doubt God's faithfulness. How we respond to trials makes all the difference. Now, not every bad things are bad per se. 
if we learn how to appreciate, how to turn it around for our good, then we will be a better person and we will come out of it stronger. When I look back at my life, if I was not retrenched from my work many, many, many years ago, I would not be where I am now, having a business on my own. But of course, it's not easy starting a business. A lot of hard work, uh, a lot of courage, and uh, make mistakes here and there. You know, I fall and then I get up again, make some troubles, you know, and, and some crises came. And I also remember the day when I got my uni placement result, I was so sad. Now, I don't know why I'm so sad. Everyone don't get in, but I got it, but I was sad. All because I didn't get the uni that I wanted. It was not my first choice. But God was very good that time. It was in that uni, USM, okay, that I came uh, uh, to, you know, met my husband. And I grew so much spiritually throughout uh, serving in the Christian fellowship in the same campus as his. So may I encourage you today that you do not waste the so-called sufferings, you know, hardship, discouragement, and, and during those hard times. Let it build in you a strong foundation like having a strong prayer life, worship life, and word life. The saying goes, when life gives you lemon, use them to make lemonade. It's so true when we face adversity. What are lemons? Lemons taste sour, and they represent life challenges. Where else, whereas the lemonade is sweet, and we represent facing life challenges and turning them into something good. I have also found some other quotes about life. When life gives you lemons, again, it's sour. Plant a seed, grow yourself an orchard, and sell it to sunkies. Carry on, okay? So make use of what life throws to you. And another quote, it says that life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Life is a journey, and to stay on the road, we must keep moving. So no matter what the condition of the road may be, when you ride uphill, you use more force. When you ride downhill, you use less force, okay? So this is another uh, life quote. It says that if life is a gift, I accept it. If life is an adventure, I dare it. If life is a mystery, I'm unfolding it. If life is a puzzle, I'm solving it. If life is a game, I play it. If life can be a struggle, I am facing it. If life is beauty, I praise it. If life is an opportunity, I took it. If life is my mission, I am fulfilling it. Just learn to go with the flow. Now the big question I will try to answer today is this. How do you go through times of weaknesses? How do we draw strength to go through these difficult times? Have you ever hit rock bottom where you're left with nothing? Probably an investment went bad, a business venture turned sour, or a relationship that didn't work out, or you have lost your job. Now there are times that we experience loneliness, without any family or close friend support, and we have to go through all kinds of emotional turmoil. And there may be times when you felt so tired, going through the same issue over and over again. It's like having to do something, an assignment, over and over again, just because your boss is not happy about it, always not happy about it. Or have you ever been picked or bullied by your teacher, your colleagues, your neighbors, friends, or family members. Today, uh, we will look at David's life. Now, the background of David, everyone is quite familiar with it, but I'll just give a very short um, background about him. David was a shepherd boy. He came from a family of eight siblings, and he was the youngest. When Prophet Samuel was sent to his family, to pick and to anoint one of them to be the next king, Samuel thought to himself, okay, I'll go for the first 
brother because the brother was so handsome, you know, he's so capable and all this. But God told Samuel, man looks at outward appearance, but I look at the heart. So David was anointed as the next king. Now, after David's victory over Goliath, David got to stay in the palace. Wow, if you got a chance to stay in the palace, I'm sure you'll be treated with all the best food, you know, best clothes, you know, everything that you dream of, you had it. You know, he has fame, he has good wealth, you know, he has a good place to stay. He has no lack of anything. He has everything that we wish we had. But then, one day, this one day changed his life and caused his life upside down. All of a sudden, all these things that he has enjoyed was, was and were taken away from him. You know what happened? King Saul became jealous about him and King Saul plotted to harm him and going to go against him. In 1 Samuel 23 verse 9, just now we read, we say that David knew, David knew already that Saul was plotting harm against him. Now question here, what will you do when you know somebody is plotting, is scheming some evil things against you, when you hear or you hear them talking bad things about you or they betray you suddenly or they devise something to harm you, you will definitely feel paranoid, right? And you feel empty, insecure, hopeless and helpless. Try to picture this in your mind. Now David was on the run. Have you watched this show? Fugitive. Of course, the actor is during my time. I think some younger ones may not uh, be able to know this. Harrison Ford, but Harrison, Harrison Ford acted as the fugitive. He was accused unjustly of murdering his wife. Imagine life being a fugitive. You will always be on the run. It's really difficult to predict whether you can sit around for long or not. You can't even know when is the next hideout will be. You can't even go and find a job. When you are sick, you can't even go to the hospital because you have to keep a very low profile about yourself. So this was what happened to David during his time. And look at this map. Uh, this map shows where David was running uh, from one place to another. And this map may seem to be very small for you, but the actual distance that David has run actually took him a few years, four to seven years. And he ran from one place to another and looked at the terrain. Mainly and mostly is all those wilderness. David ran to the desert to hide from Saul. The verse here says in verse 14, David stayed in the desert strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Zip. Day after day, Saul searched for him. But God did not give David into his hands. Now look at this desert. How can you describe this desert? The desert is an extremely dry place. It is hot, without water, without life. And if you are there, you will be exposed to danger or weather. You know, you can have sandstorm or extreme heat in the morning and extreme cold at night. Nothing productive even grow there. It is definitely not a desirable or a comfortable place to be in. We can imagine how David went through. He was deprived of so many things when he was there in the wilderness. He was exposed to danger at all times. You never know when is uh, King Saul and his men will ambush him and, and all this. So it was a very desperate moment. It was, life was very depressing. And everything around him was empty, was dark, was barren and hard. So sometimes we ourselves go through these wilderness times and we can easily form our own perceptions if we do not carefully handle it. We may you know, perceive that life is like an endless struggle. Why do I need to live anymore? You know, life is always about struggle and struggle and struggle. And because I'm in these prolonged circumstances, I can't go on anymore. Or you can think this, that life is full of troubles. You cannot see anything good about life. 
one after another, crisis and, and whatever. So how long more? Just like we are in this lockdown, how long more, God? When are you going to deliver us? You know, when, when the news of getting a vaccination, everyone is getting vaccination and all this, so we were thinking like, oh, okay, okay, we are going to be out soon, you know, we can go and visit our children and all this. But the numbers, instead of going down, is go up. You know, so it's, it's like, how long more? And it seems that sometimes we feel that we have lost God's blessing. When nothing happened, nothing good happened, we say that, hmm, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting God's blessing. I can't sense His presence. Nothing is like it used to be. Or even you started to doubt God's plan. What happened, God? Like David. David said, eh, God, what happened to your plan? You, you, you say you, you want to anoint me, you really anointed me as king. And what happened? Why am I running for my life? from my uh, father-in-law, you know, that's King Saul. And, and all this perception, you know, can really stop us from reaching our potentials and God's purpose in our life. So today, we will look at Psalm 63, where David wrote these Psalms when he was actually in the wilderness, running from Saul. So look, look at this, let's look at these Psalms and draw some nuggets of truth out of it so that we can learn and apply in our own wilderness moments. So I'll just share with you three practices to help us to handle our lowest point in our life. The first practice is seeking. When we are in the wilderness, we can feel so helpless and lost and we definitely need help. And so the first thing to do is to learn to seek God. Psalm 63 verse 1 to says this, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. What did David practice or what did he do? David seek God earnestly. For David... Seeking God means seeking Him first before other things. We got to seek God when we are in troubled times. Not only that, we should do it every day of our life. Think about that. What is the first thing you will do when you wake up? Do you check on your phone, get on social media, or turn on the TV? How great it will be if you wake up and the first thing you do is to talk to God. So may I encourage you to seek God earnestly. And David seek God personally. Not only he seek God first, he seek God personally. In verse 1, he say, when he turned to God, he say, Oh God, you are my God. God is a personal God to David. David did not say, Oh God, you are a God. Oh God, you are one God. Oh God, you are the God. But he said, God, my God, you are my God. So God is a personal God to him. And he yearns, he yearns to have this relationship with God, even though, especially when he was in the wilderness time. And we have to seek God desperately too. What do we seek when we are hungry? Of course, food. What do you seek when you are thirsty? Water. It is like you must have it or else you will lose your sanity or you lost your life, you may die, you know. So David was hungry and thirsty at that time where there was no water, but his deeper desires supersede what he, he need physically, you know. His spiritual appetite is more than his physical appetite. He longed to be satisfied by God. And Jesus said, I am the living water, I am the bread of life, come to me. And you will not thirst and you will not be hungry anymore. So practice seeking God as part of your routine on a daily basis. First thing in the morning, instead of turning to your phone or your laptop, seek God. Learn to seek God. Not the world, not your boss, not your staff, not your government, not your spouse or even your children. It is God that you should seek. In Matthew 6.33, it says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So all the things that you need during your time of weakness is there when you learn to seek 
God. Seek God so that you will know what to do. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, First, seek the counsel of the Lord. First Kings chapter 22, verse 5. You know, when we seek God and his counsel, we will know what to do next. Because his wisdom is far beyond the knowledge of man. When we are in the place of needing direction and insight for life problems, we can seek after God's counsel. He knows the beginning and the end. Therefore, he, we can't go wrong with his guidance. So when you practice seeking God in everything you do in every season of your life, you will have a godly and perspective, uh, um, heavenly perspective to enable you to live beyond your circumstances. You will look at things differently. And on top of that, there is a reward for those who seek God and seek God earnestly. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says this, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Now that was the first practice. Next is our second practice, that is remembering. Psalm 63 verse 5 says this, My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and your right hand upholds me. If you are in David's shoe, I believe you won't be able to sleep. Yes, he can't sleep. He probably cannot sleep as his enemies can ambush him anytime. The animals, maybe the jackals, scorpions and snakes may attack him. And the weather also can kill him. You know? So when David can't sleep, he didn't count the sheep. He didn't resort to alcohol or sleeping pills or drugs. He practices, he practices remembering. What are some of the things you can remember on? Remember God's power. David remember God's power and what God has done or provided for him in the past. He meditated on how God was with him, giving him victory over the giants and his enemies, the Philistines. He remembered the time when he was in the field all alone and he killed the bears and the lions. The same God that has brought him through in the past will be the same God that will see him through again. So as he do this, you know, remembering, verse 5 comes to his mind. My soul will be satisfied with fats and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. So even though David was in the desert, his remembrance of God's power caused him to be so satisfied with actual food. It blows my mind when I think about this. You know, you can be feasting with a big giant lobster in front of you or the best steak in the world, but yet you still can't find satisfaction. But here it is, David in the presence of uh, the wilderness with nothing around him, he still feel satisfied. Perhaps David was not able to sleep well in the wilderness, but he is able to find peace and rest in the protection of a loving God. David also remembered God's love. In Psalm 63 verse 3, he says, Thy loving kindness is better than life. Your steadfast love is better than life. So I know life is important and valuable, but there is something which is better than life. That is God's love. So it doesn't matter um, what are the things you have or you don't have. As long as you have God's love with you, everything will work out well. And next is to remember God's word. Recently, I was working with my daughter to memorize Psalms 27. I told her, you have to put God's word in your heart and in your mind so that when you are in trouble, you take it out again and use it so that you will have peace, you have victory. Psalms 27 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I tell her, when you are afraid, when you are fearful, read this and recite this. You know, it goes on, we say that when evil doers try to attack me to eat up my flesh, my adversary and foe, it is they who will stumble and fall. It is not me. So I told her, you memorize it 
Every day memorize it. Who knows one of these days, you may be using it. So remember what God has done for you. And here in Psalms 103, you can see a long list of what the things that God has done for you. In verse 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. He satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That means you will never grow old or weak. Okay, so we have learned to seek God. We have learned to remember God. And last but not least, the third practice is responding. Now, David responded to his circumstances by worshipping God. It's all about, more than a song, it's all about worship. Look at all this expression in Psalm 63, verse 3 to 7. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, I will bless you as long as I live in your name. I will lift up my hands, my mouth will praise you with joyful lips, I will sing for joy. So the best practice when you are in the most challenging time is to respond in praise. No matter what happened, just say praise the Lord. It's so simple, right? In worship and also adoration to God our Father, our Creator, our Maker. Because He is sovereign, our life is in His hands. He knows what is best for us. So like David, we should live beyond our circumstances, be it good or bad times. So practice to give God the praise early in the morning and at night. As in Psalms 92, verse 1 to 2 say, It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. In Psalms 103, verse 1, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, heart, mind, and strength. Bless his holy name. And in Psalms 150, verse 6, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you have breath today, you praise the Lord. Okay, so I always find ways and reasons, you know, to praise God using the air that I breathe, you know, when I see the flowers blooming, you know, at the roadside or mountains or all the natural things. I just give a word of praise. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I heard bad news coming, you know, oh, I lost a job or I lost a, a, a business, you know, instead of the swearing word, you know, <laughs> that people used to say, but hallelujah will be in my lips. And when I face mountainous problem, I can't see a way out. I just shout, thank you, Jesus. So what about David? Look at David. He was not disturbed at all by the darkness and threat of his enemies all around him. Yet David still can declare that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. As he waited God to deliver him out of his wilderness condition, he praised God, he blessed God, he blessed the name of uh, the Lord, he sang his way through the wilderness until he was delivered out from the wilderness. What about you? What about you? May I encourage you, you know, to come to God today and, and tell God, God, I want to be like David. You know, David is not disturbed at all by his condition, by, you know, the circumstances that is around him. He's not disturbed at all. Even though he, yes, he is weak, he has no energy, no food, and all this. But yet, he is strong inside out. Weakness is not a sign that we are doomed and defeated. Weakness is an opportunity for us to take on the strength of God upon us and stand tall to declare and sing of God's goodness and victory over our life circumstances. Look at Jesus. When he went to the cross, Everyone in Jesus' time will think that, you know, the cross is something very shameful, lowly. But look, the cross is the power of salvation. Nobody will ever imagine that after the death on the cross, there comes resurrection. So, as I end, as I end, every time when you find yourself in this wilderness or in David's uh, same kind of position, do not give up. Do not be afraid. We have a God to turn to. We can seek Him. We can remember Him and we can respond to Him.
Have you been through a wilderness experience or are you going through one right now? You know, I, I, I just want to let you know that you know, God wants you to have this intimate relationship with Him. You know, when you learn to seek Him, when you learn to come to Him with all your problems, it's like you're approaching a, a, a Father that is so loving that will hug you, that will embrace you, that will just lift you up from your feet, you know, and He said, don't worry. Everything has been taken care of. And this is what God is telling you today. Do not be afraid. Even though um, you may be in a bad shape today or, or whatever, God is assuring you, come to Him. God is giving you this invitation. Come to Him and I will give you rest. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we remember you, O oh God. Lord, we seek you, O oh God. Lord, we respond to your goodness, O oh God, in praise and worship, O oh God. Lord, we know, O oh God, that you know what we are going through and what we have been going through. But we are confident that you are the God of wilderness. You are the God of prosperous times as well we can count on you you will be to us a refuge a fortress a shade and a shield by night thank you lord and give us strength oh god in our time of weaknesses in jesus name we pray amen amen praise the lord and what a joy to hear uh, mio preach okay this morning you know even as we respond you know in time of weakness Okay, remember three practices seeking God remember His love remember His power His work and respond to Him that's so important you know in every weakness that we have how many of you realize that when you read the Bible you know there's a phrase that says in 1 Corinthians you know when we are weak He is strong and many times when we sing those old songs that give thanks you know when we are weak we are strong you know I, I want to end even by going back to Psalms 8 you know, Psalms 8, I've read to verse uh, 4. When you come to verse 5, okay, Psalmist David said this, For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Sometimes we think about Jesus. Oh, going to the cross. Maybe it's the weakest moment. Okay, the, the, the hardest time of his life. But yet, okay, the very purpose of that weakness is that Jesus overcome death. Okay, there's victory at the cross. Just as when you hear from Amil just now, at, at the very point where uh, Jesus, right, this is how Jesus responded. Okay, likewise for all of us, okay, in every uh, weakness that you have, every situation that you have, probably that's, that's the darkest moment of your life. Friends, okay, when you are at that moment, seek God, remember Him, and then respond to Him. That could be the other way the strongest point okay that you can come to our Lord Jesus Christ and verse 9 it ended by saying O Lord our Lord how excellent is your name in all the earth I pray through this season okay you will finish reading okay the book of Psalms and this series says more than a song so next week I'm going to continue okay with uh, the story of David in times of justice so God bless you bye